Hello, and welcome to the Computing Conversations column. This column is from the September 2012 issue of IEEE Computer and is titled Bertrand Meyer, Software Engineering and the Eiffel Programming Language. There is supporting video material for this column that you can find in the IEEE Computer Society YouTube channel or in the IEEE Digital Library. I'm the editor of the column and I'm Charles Severance from the University of Michigan. Bertrand Meyer has spent his career at the nexus of computer science education, object-oriented programming, and formal approaches to software engineering. His earliest work involved the Simula programming language. I had the, the great uh, uh, privilege and uh, good fortune of being exposed to Simula 67, which, uh, well, because after 67, I'm not that old, but uh, still Simula was kind of, uh, was the, was still the dominant a view of object-oriented programming at that time, which very, very few people had encountered. So the Simula was the first object-oriented language. And, uh, well, I, it was quite uh, confidential, so the kind of best-kept uh, secret for many years. But I, I got introduced to it, and I immediately knew that it was the, the right way to program. It was pretty obvious, uh, at least to, to me. And so for a number of years, I worked with Simula, but both uh, in, on paper, I mean, for, to help my research work and, and to build systems. Meyer's decades of work in understanding object-oriented programming patterns are reflected in his popular book, Object-Oriented Software Construction from Prentice Hall, 1988. He also co-wrote the first formal software engineering paper in 1977 on the concept of Z, or Z, notation. Meyer's academic career led him to the University of California at Santa Barbara in 1983, where an encounter with a student changed the direction of his research. According to Annie Meyer, his wife, and the CEO of Eiffel Software. And suddenly one night he comes back home and says, well, I have a student from Japan who is excited about my ideas and uh, he wants to talk to his company about it. Oh, I said, okay, well, I, there was a, a new idea, why not? <laughs> But I didn't really believe in it. But several months later, Burton <laughs> came home and said, well, the company is interested in my ideas and they are ready to start to, to help us start a company. So there it was. And uh, that was the beginning of the second adventure. The first adventure was the move to the US with five children. The founding notion of the company was to build architects a sophisticated text editor. But before they could begin, they needed to select a programming environment. Meyer wanted to use the project to serve as an example of the correct way to develop software. Simula was more than 20 years old at the time, so he reviewed the more recent object-oriented programming languages. I looked at C++, which was there. I opened the book. I closed it uh, pretty quickly afterwards. There was Objective-C. There was small talk. These were all interesting developments, but uh, they didn't really correspond to the kind of strict software engineering standards that we, uh, that my colleagues and I had learned to, 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 to observe. The more recent object-oriented languages either moved towards a typeless approach or implemented a subset of the rich object-oriented concepts present in Simula. Instead of compromising on his approaches to software development, Meyer decided to use a language of his own making that he could cross-compile to C and get his architect's project started. So we developed our own uh, language, which was based on, well, the stories, uh, would, the full story, of course, would be longer, but I had written a book which I never finished, but which had a very precise notation for expressing uh, algorithms uh, at the time, so I used that. I used my work on formal specification. I co-wrote the first paper on the Z, uh, uh, specification language, so my work on Z and also a successor to Z, which was called M, was also very influential. So I kind of, in a, over a half a day, I, I kind of uh, put all these together, and we implemented a a preprocessor to to well, a we sort of it, I think, right from the start as a compiler to generate C, but it was really just for internal purposes. Meyer and his team used his new makeshift language to quickly develop the architect's editor in time for the company to generate customer interest by displaying it in a booth at the inaugural Object-Oriented Programming Systems and Applications Conference in 1986, Oopsla. Attendees found the programming language that Meyer had invented far more interesting than the architect's application he developed using the language, according to Annie. Well, at Oopsla, uh, Burton had some tutorials, and, uh, and that was the, the first uh, place where 
Eiffel was really uh, exhibited, and from then on it was clear that the focus of the company was more on was on that technology, on the tools uh, to help programmers um, make the most of the power of object-oriented technology. After returning home from Uppsala, Meyer realized he wasn't alone in having reservations about the approaches being taken by the mid-1980s object-oriented programming languages, such as Smalltalk and C++. He quickly made his rough Eiffel development environment available to a few interested customers. People who started playing with the language, even with a very primitive implementation we had at the time, started telling us, you know, there's something absolutely new, which I've never seen before, it's how easily you can change your mind. And, and, and I would say today this is still one of the major uh, assets uh, of Eiffel is the flexibility, to, to use the technical term, the extendability. So people don't necessarily uh, believe us when we say this because it's like a hand waving and to a certain extent everyone say, uh, says, I mean, people talk about flexibility. But this is perhaps one of the, whisper, well, it's one of the major differences be, between Eiffel and, uh, and, and other technologies is how easily you can have a first design, a clean design. I'm not talking about uh, you know agile style, uh, hack it and uh, and and see uh, see if it works. It, it really a, a good design, which however is not perfect. You realize that it's not perfect. You change it, and you don't uh, spend your entire life paying for the uh, sins of your use, so 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 to speak. Because Eiffel provided the full breadth of object-oriented features and had formal software engineering support throughout. It provided an environment that addressed the entire software development lifecycle, from the initial design and specifications down to implementation, debugging, performance tuning, and the ability to evolve and expand the application over a long period of time. One of the key uh, distinctive features of Eiffel is that it's, it's a lifecycle approach. So it's not just for programming. No, not only is it not just a language, but also it's not, even as a language, it's not just for programming, it's for analysis, it's for design, it's for implementation, it's, it's for maintenance, for testing, and so on. So it is really this is kind of uh, holistic, to, to use a pretentious term, a view of software development. And so, you know, this is kind of really still going against the grain of, uh, of, of the software engineering culture today. Most people think they need some kind of high-level uh, requirements tool, uh, some case tool to do analysis and design, and then then or something or a visual studio to do implementation and then JUnit or something like that to, to do testing and what we do is that we integrate everything which means that for for the developer you don't have this need to to um, to switch between Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or, 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 or all the time to, to to switch personalities to to switch gears context and so on you stay in the same conceptual framework and the basic ideas of IFO which are you know, classes inheritance single and multiple multiple inheritances are important and of course, as you pointed out, uh, contracts, the use of uh, uh, formal, precise specification elements uh, uh, is a, in association with every piece of software. Th these ideas, and, and a few more, these ideas apply throughout the life cycle, through, throughout the, uh, the process, from the highest, more, most uh, abstract levels of uh, thinking about the system, all the way down to the nuts and bolts, the nitty gritty uh, of software. Annie Meyer started doing office work for Eiffel Software. Over time, as she learned new skills and staffing changed, including one tragic incident in which a business manager was killed in a fatal airplane crash, Annie slowly took on additional responsibilities to the point where 20 years later, she's now the CEO and runs Eiffel Software's day-to-day -day operations. The company continues to develop and evolve the Eiffel programming environment, as well as provide training and conferences for the Eiffel community. Like the Simula community in the late 1960s, the Eiffel community is small, and most programmers might not even know that Eiffel language exists. But the Eiffel community is dedicated and passionate about a product that allows them to approach their software development projects using a powerful framework and language. According to Meyer, to characterize the typical uh, Eiffel user, well, this is someone who typically has a difficult application. Uh, so uh, an application uh, often for which uh, he or she has tried 
something else before, maybe a couple other technologies and failed, you, you know, hit limits of complexity or limits of reliability, and then doesn't have a choice, and he wants it really to succeed. He, and uh, so it, it can be in the financial industry, where some of our biggest uh, customer applications are, can be in the aerospace industry, which is also another uh, strong uh, area for, for us, and can be in healthcare, sometimes also, of course, in education, which is a kind of a different kind of application, of course. Uh, but it's, it's people who just cannot afford the stuff to fail. Uh, so that's one, character, uh, one characteristic. It's that the uh, reliability and quality uh, requirements are typically very high. Are often with continuous operation for you know systems managing a trade floor or this kind of thing. Meyer teaches the Introduction to Programming course for computer science majors at ETH Zurich using the Eiffel language and his book Touch of Class from Springer Verlag 2009. Using Eiffel in class allows his students to achieve a wide range of skill levels. Using a large existing class library that supports traffic simulations Students with less experience can quickly write relatively sophisticated and engaging applications while leaving the complexity behind the abstraction. More sophisticated students can immediately peer into the nature of the abstraction and the code itself, which is fully documented with well-specified software designs as well as contracts for each of the modules in the class library. For more than 30 years, Bertrand Meyer has taught computer scientists about formal software engineering and object-oriented approaches, and he continues to do so through his many books, conferences, and the Eiffel language. This column is from the September 2012 issue of IEEE Computer and is titled Bertrand Meyer, Software Engineering and the Eiffel Programming Language. There is supporting video material for this column that you can find in the IEEE Computer Society YouTube channel or in the IEEE Digital Library. I'm the editor of the column and I'm Charles Severance from the University of Michigan.